I wanna show you guys what's in this contract. In this contract is my highest earning paycheck in overseas basketball to date. Now this happened in little El Salvador in Central America. Now I'm not making this video to gloat or to show you that, look at what I earned because there's hundreds of players, there's thousands of players who earn more than I could ever even dream of playing basketball. But what I do wanna show you today is the formula for how you yourself can actually increase your paycheck year by year and earn substantially above the league market value that you're playing in. When we look at the salary, it's $1,756.92. Now I had $250 for food as well with the preseason if we divide it by four, they paid me $545. We divide that by four, that'll come out to $136 per month. Now, they gave me a tiny, tiny bonus. It was only $100. If you divide that by four, that's $25 a month. Now, what you don't see on this contract is that I also had a basketball academy. Unfortunately, I didn't actually save the contract for that. But just take my word for it. I had a basketball academy. I'll flash a bunch of pictures so you know it's there. That was $365 per month with the basketball academy. And as well, every season I was in El Salvador, there was actually a private sponsor. Take that how you will. They would sponsor me every month and every season and that I would virtually get about $800 to $1,000 from the sponsor every year that I re-signed with this club Metapon. So if we divide that by four, that's an extra $200 for a grand total of $2,732.92 American. Now I know what you're thinking. Well, only $2,700, that's not a lot of money, Jose. You were promising me a big paycheck. Well, first of all, what you have to understand is in overseas basketball, that is pretty much on par with some very high level leagues in Europe, in South America, in the Middle East that is actually a pretty decent paycheck, especially when you're playing in a lower market such as El Salvador. I also had another job while I was working in El Salvador. So not only was I making near $3,000 American, but I was also making about four or $5,000 Canadian while I was playing. This is what it's all about when you're playing overseas basketball is maximizing your time because there is so much dead time when you're playing. You really are only occupied for maybe four or five hours, maybe if you wanna be per day. So that means you still have 10, 12 hours a day to do it, whatever it is that you wanna do. It's one thing to get into overseas basketball. It's another thing entirely to actually make it work and benefit you financially and in your life goals. And that was something that I was able to do during this time of my life. But what originally looks like a rinky-dink $2,000 salary actually ends up being a life change in time because I was able to pay off my student loans completely, pay off my credit cards to invest in a property, to begin saving. I was able to completely change my life around during this time frame. You too can do this. It's just that you have to look for certain characteristics and build on certain characteristics when you are with a club. Now, the first thing you gotta do is you gotta be a national if you can, no matter where you are, especially though, if you're in a lower level market such as El Salvador like I was, this will be so beneficial to you because now you are the commodity. You are the person who people are seeking out versus vice versa. So for instance, if you were just an import and you were trying to get on with the team, you were trying to build good cachet with them, trying to do all the things that I was doing, it's gonna be a lot harder because imports have way more expectations imports are a dime a dozen but if you are a good national especially in a lower market such as el salvador who relatively speaking the nationals there aren't that good of a level then you are such a huge commodity and that was the first thing that i noticed was as soon as i started playing well there all of a sudden all the teams wanted me because they knew hey it's rare this is a national who's averaging 20 points a game this is a national who's one of the better shooters in the league this is a really rare commodity in the league this is something that will translate to a lot of leagues i've know guys who have gone to hong kong as nationals and they've been making 
eight, nine K. I know guys who have gone to Japan and they've been making 50 to 60,000 a year. And all of it comes from them being a national. And it all depends, right? El Salvador is a lower level market. Whereas someone who is pretty good and you're Japanese, you're gonna be making bank out there. The second thing is that you have to increase your salary every year because you have to understand that you are the commodity now. Usually players aren't in that position, so they're not able to dictate the terms of their salaries of their negotiations. But if you are the commodity, then you can say that I want an increase or someone else will do the increase. And that was what I did every year. So when I first got there, I had my lowest paying salary, which was $700. And then every year I just increased 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%. And I just kept on going up until eventually I hit that near $1,800 USD mark. And I would have kept on going in the future. If it had it not been for COVID, I would have kept on going. It would have kept on increase and they would have had to have meet it because I just kept on getting better and better and putting up the stats and I was producing. So the thing is you cannot set that benchmark too low for yourself. And the other thing is that you cannot go down from it because once you go down, all the other teams in the league know that you went down, hey, this is your market value. Why are you gonna ask me for this amount when you only ask for this amount from this club? The next thing is that if you can be a good community figure, this is really big and I think it goes over a lot of players' heads these days is that they think that as long as they can hoop, they're gonna get whatever they want, which to some extent is true. But if you can be a community figure, if you can help with maybe academies like I did, maybe with diplomatic relations, obviously, because a lot of guys, some guys have dual citizens, some guys come from the States. If you can do any of these things, then a lot of teams will actually look at you a lot more favorably because they know that you're a good pillar in the community and they know that that's how they want their club to be represented and sure enough it started paying off more and more because these guys saw that hey this isn't just another american or canadian who's coming here just to get a paycheck and go home this guy actually cares he views this as like a second home to him so we're gonna we're gonna reward him for that and the final thing is that you gotta keep on working at your game most of the time in overseas basketball you don't even get a contract past a year or two even at the high levels those guys are only signing for like two three years and if you're at a lower level, such as a, what I'm playing at and what the majority of you I'm assuming would be playing at low to mid level, you're only gonna be getting it probably for a season or maybe a season at max. So you always gotta be in the gym working on your game. It seems really obvious, but that has to be a continuous theme in your game. So with all of that in mind, there you have it. That's how I was able to get my biggest payday in overseas basketball. I hope that helps you guys out. You know. For me, again, it was in a low level market. For you, you may be fortunate enough to be in a higher level market. That's why I wanted to make this video. Again, it wasn't to gloat or anything or say, look at me, look at what I've done, but to help you guys give a baseline and understanding of what you can do in your overseas career too. Anyway, guys, take care, God bless, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.